Thanks for joining us, everyone. Today, we're privileged to speak with Caitlin, a 34-year-old filmmaker and survivor of head and neck cancer with dysphagia who discovered renewed purpose through speech therapy after her cancer treatment. Welcome, Caitlin. Could you describe what it's like to live with a swallowing disorder? Yeah, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. It uh, means a lot. But yeah, so my journey really started after I was already diagnosed with head and neck cancer. And I had already gone through one surgery and seven weeks of radiation. Um, but then the cancer came back and I had to do another surgery to remove majority of my lymph nodes in my um, face and neck, and then 75% of my tongue. Um, so in addition to this surgery, I had to see a radiation oncologist, and his name is Dr. Haraf. Um, and he actually just retired, but I was one of his last patients, and it really saved my life. Uh, he told me, I'll never forget this, he told me, if you let me put you through torture, I can save your life. And that's pretty much that those words keep going through my mind. He saved my life, he saved my life, but it was definitely torture. I've never experienced anything like it before in my life, um, both physically and mentally. So I said yes to 11 more weeks of radiation, um, which is a lot for people, and a lot of times people don't survive. Uh, the radiation oncologist told me that it may, I may never be able to eat again, or I may never be able to swallow or drink, so I really had to prepare myself. So the whole time, I'm going through the radiation, I was remembering how each bite of food may be my last. I was not in good place mentally and physically. I could barely control my drool uh, that was continuously dripping from my mouth. Even you can hear now, you know, my saliva is sickening while I speak. Um, so I take a pause. And, you know, and then I let myself get hauled up and now I was just going through all this and I actually had a suction machine that I would have to have on me as otherwise I wouldn't be, I would choke or I wouldn't be able to, to do anything. I wouldn't be able to speak or swallow. Um, so it was at this point that my aunt actually, she's a speech and swallowing expert for infants. So she actually found my speech and swallowing therapist. Her name is Liz Platt. And she helped me with so much. Um, she literally saved my life. And then everyone that I've come across has saved my life in one way or another. And um, so I came to her, like I said, in a very compromised state mentally and physically. However, it was her method. and her words that brought me to be even better than I was before. And, you know, she focused on the holistic approach so and never backed down. She told me how much faith she had in me and how she couldn't wait to meet the real me behind all this. Because I came to her and I would barely get out of bed, I would just be a zombie pretty much for like a very, very long time. Um, but then through a lot of exercises and therapy, we finally, right now, are at a point where the methods that she gave me are becoming natural reflexes. So the breathing exercises I do um, at between speaking, between swallowing, they become just natural reflexes. Um, I still have to work every single day. I can't back down ever. So I have to continuously practice all this. Um, but those exercises finally let me eat pretty much anything I wanted. Sit is still off the table. 
But, um, but other than that, I've pretty much eaten everything I've ever wanted. Um, and I went from putting food in my mouth to taste it and I'm spitting it out to chewing and swallowing my favorite uh, chicken and pasta dishes. And then, you know, living with this makes me realize how special food is and how important your mind is. For my health, I still do one tube feed in a day to my feeding tube for all my nutrients. And then by mouth, I just eat for pleasure. So that really helps me mentally to do that. And, you know, I've, I could have stopped eating for fear of aspiration or continue to live in fear of choking and never try my first bite of hamburger, which was actually the first thing I ever ate, which is pretty hard to eat for your first time. Mm. But because of my friends, family, and this plot, I continue to live my life with an absence of fear. And I cannot emphasize that enough. Never let fear win. Uh, fear always wants to be your best friend, you know. But it's necessary to say, sorry, no, you can't sit with us. You can't do it. So, so yeah. Uh, Long-winded, but... <laughs> yeah. Caitlin, thank you for sharing that. When you shared all of that, the words that come to mind, one, resilience, and two, bravery. Oh, thank you. Absolutely, yeah. The amount of things that you have gone through at such a young age, I can't imagine. And when you said that you took a bite of food, not knowing whether that could be your last bite ever in your entire life, um, you know, people don't think about things like that when they don't yeah. have to. What a, a huge shift in your thinking when you were going through treatment with that. Let me ask you a, a question here. If you were to pick point, pinpoint one of your biggest challenges because of your difficulty with swallowing, what would that be? Um, I went out to dinner in public. Mm -hmm. I went out for any meal in mm -hmm. public because I make a lot of noises. I don't know, people that go through this probably know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. you know. I'm clearing my throat. I'm, you know, I'm spinning sometimes. I have to excuse myself to go to the restroom to clear out my mouth. Um, you know, but my friends and family really helped being like, if the tables were turned, what would you say to us? Mm -hmm. And so I keep saying that to myself. And, and I also am like, all right, we have to go to the noisy restaurants because <laughs> And there's no, like, fine dining and, you know, very quiet. I want a lively place. Um, so, yeah, that's how I did around that. But that's probably my business because it's so self-conscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you find, have found some good strategies for, for navigating that. And kudos to you for still going out yeah. in public to eat. That's a lot of yeah. – that's something that we hear a lot in our community that people – don't do that because of the right. fear, the embarrassment, all that goes with that. Um, and so a lot of people aren't doing their normal social activities, which leads to right. isolation, depression, all sorts of things. Um, yeah. So kudos to you for still getting out there. Um, I have one more question here for you. What words of hope would you share with somebody who's going through a similar situation? Yeah, well, um, I'm sorry, first of all. That's what I would say to them, I'm sorry. Um, you know, through, through every struggle that I found myself going through, I notice I find myself more and more. And with this cancer struggle, I think I finally found myself to the fullest extent that I can, to be honest. So my worst brothers are really focused on yourself through all this. And I know that may seem selfish, but you know, <laughs> you've earned it. Um, you've truly earned it. Um, you've had this struggle, and yes, please remain humble and keep your real friends close, but do not for a minute think you are not worth thinking about. You have earned the front seat of your life, and so never forget that. And also just have hope in knowing that the things that seem the worst now will eventually change 
it has time just heal our wounds. I truly believe that. You know, we won't heal you completely, but it will help with the little things. And it's really all about the little things. Wow, Caitlin, that's profound. Thank you for, for sharing that with us. It takes a lot of courage <laughs> to share your story. So we appreciate your time. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, thank you.